Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Oh, why did I do that? This is another seasonal recap. Uh, this is the fall edition and this video will be a little longer than the other videos because there will be a bonus segment at the end of the video. The first month of fall is September and September was a huge podcasting month for me. I started listening to a bunch of new podcasts. There were three podcasts that really stood out to me out of all the ones I tried out in September and it was The White Vault, Mirrors, and Dark Dice. The White Vault is a hori- a hori? A horror fictional audio drama and it's set up to be like found footage horror. Um, the production of this podcast is amazing uh, and they have an international cast, so many of the characters speak different languages, and there's just like so many cool things about it, and it's it's amazing. The White Vault follows that horror trope of like researchers stumbling onto like ancient ruins or something, and then they start mysteriously dying off. Um, as stereotypical as that is, The White Vault makes it very unique because it is a podcast. You know, there's just so much. It's like there's so many things you could do with podcasts and like sound effects which oh my god i like i understand that that's you can do that in a lot of different medias but the sound effects in the white vault like the production is just it's just it's yes yes i love it i love it a lot <laughs> Mirror's podcast is a fictional sci-fi ghost story about three women in three different generations and how they are all connected. And one of the main characters is queer and she has a wife and the wife is like continuously mentioned and involved in the story throughout all the episodes. Um, and it, it reminds me of, oh, what is that woman? What is that Denis Villeneuve? What is that Denis Villeneuve uh, movie? Denis Villeneuve, fucking French Arrival. Yes, yes, yes. It reminds me of Arrival, but a lot more casual and queer. Yeah, Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Oh, French. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, the other podcast is Dark Dice. Um, so many things about this podcast. Okay, first of all, I listened to like one Dungeons and Dragons podcast and I've tried to get into other ones, but it's just, it's just so difficult for me to get into them. Because it's always like, it's, it's too heavy on like Dungeons and Dragons knowledge and I'm, I'm just a noob. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. And like, it's just very hard for me to follow, but but Dark Dice is recorded and edited to flow really smoothly the way that um, scripted podcasts would go. And I feel like that really plays a part in me comprehending what's happening. It is a horror Dungeons and Dragons podcast. And like now that I've gotten a taste of horror D&D, that is like the only D&D podcast I want to listen to now. Also, the production is really good. Um, it's the same, uh, it's the same company that does The White Vault. I didn't realize it was the same company until like I started listening to it and I was like, hey, I know that voice actor. And then like kept like mentioning more and more voice actors and I'm like, wait a second, this is the exact same cast as The White Vault. Anyways, it's, 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 it's really good. I actually love it. Um, I like interacting with the cast in the dark dice more than I do in the white vault, but I like the white vault more. I very, it's very complicated, but I love both of them so much. I will most likely talk about them in the next podcast recommendations video that I do, whenever that will be, uh, but you could just beat me to it and, you know, check them out now if you'd like. All of these podcasts are really good and I highly recommend looking into them, you know, just see if you'd be interested in them. Oh my god, why do I keep doing this? <laughs> okay, so, so, Succession. Um, September, I finished Succession. This, the show is so wild, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Succession is a satirical drama about a conservative, selfish, white capitalist family who runs one of the biggest corporations in the US. It is just so funny. Like, they're terrible people, but it's just so funny. There's just something very entertaining watching a show that mocks 
rich white people, you know? And the show is very timely, so it like makes references to famous rich people now, uh, particularly politicians. And it's just so funny to like, to see the connections, the references, and be like, ha, that's really funny. Um, season two of The Boys started airing in September. The Boys is a show I think very highly of, and it is such a brilliant and, and wild and hilarious TV show. It's based off of a comic, um, and the comics were satirical of other comic books, but now that it is a TV show, it is satirical to comic book movies and TV shows the same way that Watchmen was. And y'all know how much I love Watchmen, so like, yeah, like, it is almost at the exact same level of Watchmen to me. Like, it's so very good. Um, there's a lot of political commentary in it. Highly recommend the show. Highly recommend it. So, briefly mention Markiplier. Um, oh my god. Okay, uh, my favorite YouTuber and gamer of 11 years outed himself uh, for sexual harassment this year, so I decided to look for another gamer. Okay, my hair is just like, it's killing me, dude. It's killing me. <laughs> yeah, I look ridiculous and you know what? That's fine. That's fine. So I found out that Markiplier was a decent trans ally. So I started watching his videos, specifically um, Alien Isolation. He has a very loud personality and it contrasts my quieter personality. So he's not gonna be the replacement. He's not gonna have the title of favorite YouTuber. I'm still looking for gaming YouTubers to stand. It is quite, it's taking a very long time because <laughs> I'm so picky. But if you have any recommendations for not problematic gaming YouTubers, please tell me in the description. I will check them out. Oh my god, okay, yeah. So in September, um, I started making my Jade City po playlist, playlist, podcast. A lot of my friends were reading Jade City at the time. So like I got back into it because I was actively engaging in conversations and uh, I made a bunch of playlists for it. On My Honor, My Life, and My Jade is for the call siblings. It's a mix of songs that I chose for each sibling and also songs that I think applies to the book as a whole and the family as a whole. The playlist is really upbeat. Um, all the songs I've never heard before. Like I literally found new songs just for this playlist. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on it, so, like, I guess it's really good. <laughs> I don't want to, like, stroke my ego too much. Get Up, Keep Going is the playlist I have for Lon. Uh, he's my favorite, so, of course, like, I really love this playlist. I love this playlist more than I loved my uh, Call Siblings one. The one that I made for the siblings is good, but Call Lon's is just so, so sad. And it's just so good because it's so sad. <laughs> like, like, call on, why are you so sad, man? Like, baby, I'll pay for your therapist. Just, just tell me, just let me help you, man. <laughs> He's so sad. Oh, man. And the lyrics are so specific for Lon. Like, if you ever get bored, just like, listen, just like, listen to my playlist and just really listen to the lyrics because like, I never, okay, the thing about my playlists that are for characters or like a TV show or whatever, I will only add songs if there is at least one lyric that directly relates to that character. Like I don't add any song onto that list, onto that playlist if there isn't a song that is like actually relevant to whoever the playlist is for. Yeah, like playlists are very deep for me. So like I take them a little too seriously. Like if you want to see how specific I get, you can look at the lyrics for Drown by Bring Me the Horizon. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is for Lon. This makes sense. I don't feel anything anymore. I did. I chose for Call Hilo. Uh, his playlist is very aggressive and angry, but also a little bit melancholy because he's very sad and tired from all the pressure from his role in his family. Um, not as sad as Call Lan, obviously, but he, he's something. He is something. Yeah. I also have playlists for Shay and Anden, but, um, 
I haven't worked on it for three months. I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't think I'm ever gonna finish them if I'm gonna be honest. Okay, and lastly, September songs. Um, so you see a lot of songs from the Jade City playlists on here, like Parasite Eve, Attack of Panic, Kill vs. Mame, and Don't Touch was influenced by my roommate. I've been stealing a lot of their music. Um, and yeah, so like, learning I'm just, I'm just new music for me and it's cool and I keep replaying it over and over again so there's a lot of their songs um on my list for September October and November Kill vs Mame and Don't Touch are on my Harley Quinn playlist which was also replayed a lot in September uh I was before those before I like added new songs in September um I wasn't very satisfied with the playlist it felt very generic but like now I'm just like Yes, I really love this playlist now. Um, yeah, so it, I think it's a really good playlist and I really like the songs on it for Harley now. Yeah, rambling. Uh, <laughs> October. <laughs> um, from here on out, my life just goes downhill because of Twitch. <laughs> um, it all started with this month, y'all. started with this month. October was a just full gaming month okay okay october 1st i woke up and i went on youtube to watch markiplier's recent among us video and because i haven't really looked at other gamers besides my ex favorite youtuber i was like oh my god there's all these gamers that i don't know and i was like okay i'm gonna look into some of them because i need to find a gamer that i really want to stand and there was one player that whose vibe I really like. And I watched some of his videos for Among Us and I was like, whoa, this guy, like he's so smart and he's such a good detective and he has great intuition and he's really paranoid. And I'm like, I love this person's vibe. And that was Chilled Chaos. And then I went on Twitch to watch Chilled play Among Us live. Oh my God, the downfall of my life. Well, I don't regret it, but it's... <laughs> I'm skipping too far ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I went on Twitch and then watching Twitch multiple times a week for an average of five hours a day became my life. And it is still my life to this day. <laughs> the most I've watched was like 14 hours a day, which is so, so bad. Like, I can't believe I watched 14 hours in one day. That was three different streams. And the first one started at 5 a.m. Like... <laughs> You might be thinking, Elia, why are you waking up at 5 a.m. to watch Twitch? The answer is Peter J. Lewis, the newest addition to my voice actor thirst list. <laughs> that man is fucking unbelievable. Who wakes up? He, he, Peter, Peter's time zone is only one hour ahead of me, okay? Who the fuck streams at 6 a.m., Peter? Who the fuck streams at 6 a.m.? Lastly, October was the month that I finally released the first episode for my podcast, Labyrinth of the Bazaar. Uh, it's a podcast that me and my friend Rhea co-host together, and it's it's going really great. Like, I'm just oh, I'm just so proud of myself for actually doing a podcast. Like, it was kind of just like a pipe dream to me a few years ago, but now I'm like actually doing it. And that's really cool. It's literally just a podcast where my friend and I watch things that we really enjoy and talk about it. And it's like, it doesn't get better than that. I've just, it just, it's, it's a fun podcast. I love making it. And I'm really glad that other people are actually enjoying it too. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, songs for October. Succession is on here again because it was my go-to homework playlist for a while. Um, League of Legends, all of their songs because, oh my god, I just, every now and then I um, listen to League of Legends songs and oh, there's just, there's so many songs this year from League and they're just so good. Oh my god, it's just so frustrating because I don't, I don't like League. Shh, I don't like League, but, uh, <laughs> but like their music is so fucking good. I don't, I just wish League was a little better <laughs> so I could like the music and the game. Um, yeah. <laughs> I also started listening to rock a lot in October. It was a lot of Bring Me the Horizon and Marmosets. Okay, November already because October was absolutely nothing. It was just gaming. <laughs> um, okay, so 
I streamed on Twitch for the first time in October, in November, in November. I streamed first time in October. I streamed for the first time in November. My God, I'm just really excited. Like it's, I'm just doing so many different things as a content creator, and it's like all the things that I've always wanted to do for a really long time, and it's like, wow, I'm actually doing it in 2020. I'm just really proud of myself and. Just like, you know, looking back at everything I've done in 2020, it's like I did so much stuff as a content creator and for like myself. And, you know, I'm just really happy because 2020, I wanted 2020 to be my year. And, you know, obviously it did not go as planned, but I still made the best of it. Uh, so I'm just very excited and happy for myself. Right. Uh, in November... I was moping over Game of Thrones again because I always do it, but in November it reached like the point where I started rewatching Game of Thrones again. Uh, yeah, I just I really want something to fill the hole in my chest that used to be for Game of Thrones, uh, which leads into the next topic, which is his dark materials. Uh, Y'all remember that like that really controversial uh, movie? Uh, with a golden compass and a polar bear, and it was released the same time as the first Narnia movie. Yeah, so his Dark Materials is based off of the same book, but it is so much better. It was really controversial at the time because um, I was in a very Catholic environment at that age, and everyone was like, don't watch it because it's anti-God. That series, the book series, is banned because of its anti-religious uh, <laughs> propaganda. But I think it's really interesting how Narnia is literally Catholicism propaganda and how his dark materials is perceived as anti-Catholicism, but it actually isn't anti-religion. It's just commentary on how organizations have a lot of control over people. And in this case, they used a fictional church. Uh, well, mm, in this world, their government is mixed in with the church. And it, it looks very much like Catholicism because the leaders are all men and they all dress like priests. And there's a lot of like religious references in the series as a whole. But anyways, there's a lot to like unpack with metaphors and so much, I mean, that's, not, that's like not even talk, talking about what the story is about, you know? Anyways, there's a lot of things I could say about His Dark Materials. I just think it's a really great show. I, it has so much potential, like so much potential. Um, and there's so much love and investment from me that it could probably replace Game of Thrones. Maybe. I'm really hoping that it will. <laughs> um, I'm not sure yet, you know? It's only been two seasons and Game of Thrones didn't become what it is to me now until a few seasons later. Oh yeah, so in November I started a monthly workout challenge and I actually surprisingly did keep it up throughout the month, um, so congrats to me, I guess. <laughs> I always talk about how I don't have upper body strength, uh, but when I do work out, I never do anything for my arms. And so this month I was like, okay, I'm actually going to do something for my arms. So I did a lot of like push-ups and stuff, which like I can't do push-ups, but like now I'm building it up and I'm very determined to like keep that up because I want to be able to do push-ups. It's, it's something that I've always wanted to do like as a child because I was like, why can't I do push-ups? <laughs> Anyways, um... Yeah, so working out and like it makes me feel really good about my body and I'm really happy with how I look and how it makes me feel. Twitch, again, um, I watch a lot of hours in November, of course. Um, Chilled Chaos is not the replacement gamer that I was hoping he would be, but I still really enjoy his content. The list grew to Chilled Chaos, Dumb Dog, and Steve Suptic. They're just really funny people and I love, I love watching them and they, they play together a lot. So it's just like, and I, oh, Steve and Dumb Dog's friendship. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. And then Dumb Dog's name is Apollo. And y'all know, y'all know how much I love the god Apollo. So I was like, when I found out his name was Apollo, I was like, that's really funny. It'd be really funny if I started really liking you. And then I actually did start liking him, but I didn't like him because of his name. I liked him because of who he is. Let me just get that straight. Anyways. Um, I'm losing my train of thought because now I'm thinking about Dumb Dog. 
yes, yes, they are not my favorite gamer yet. I won't, I'm still searching for someone to be titled and crowned my favorite YouTuber slash gamer. Okay, so November songs. Bring Me The Horizon's new album, Post Human Horror, wait, Post Human Survival Horror. Yes, post what did I say? Post-human survival horror. The new album is, it's so, it's heavy metal and it just makes me really excited for more music from them. And like, yes, I have my favorite band back, you know, it's, it's a really great feeling. Also, Zombies 2, uh, <laughs> so many things to say about that movie because it's actually really problematic, but, but, <laughs> but the music's really good. Um, there, I, I was really upset that there wasn't a song as good as Someday, which for some reason I have a very I love that song for a, a lot of- I don't- I, I don't know why I like that song a lot, but I do- I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, I really like watching Disney Channel movies, um, uh, because I just- I don't know. They're just fun to watch. Okay, bonus segment now. Um, my god, I've talked way too much. So every year I make a list of resolutions and I also write down my bucket list of things that I anticipate to do in that year or like- I write them down as I actually do it. I met my sibling, Robin. Me and my youngest sibling flew out to Florida uh, and went to Disney World with them. And I'm just, I'm really happy that COVID didn't get in the way of that because it's been like the highlight of my year. I really miss it. And it, it happened literally right before COVID hit. And so it was like, not only do I reflect on it as like, a really awesome trip with two of my siblings. It was also like the last time that I was out of the house, you know? Um, yeah, so I miss it a lot. On my resolutions, it was read one Witcher book and read one Game of Thrones book. I read two anthologies for The Witcher. I didn't really like it as much, unfortunately. And I read 3.5 books of Game of Thrones uh, before I decided to discontinue it because a lot of uh, mm, things in Game of Thrones. It's not a good book for marginalized people, I'll tell you that. Watch Batman vs. Superman once a month. Yes, I actually did that uh, and I still do it and will continue to do it probably for 2021. I relaunched my Red Bubble uh, and in 2021 I hope to upload more stickers on Redbubble because it was like just random shit on Redbubble that I put on there this year. Um, yeah, I had some art challenges too. Uh, make a YouTube intro. I ended up making three different ones this year, which is really wild. I do an art piece with two people in like the art. Uh, I did a couple of those. One was a Superbat fan art and I did a couple for original characters. Superman fan art, I did four of them. <laughs> and don't use black and white. Um, I'm heavily dependent on black and white when I do art, so I really wanted to push myself out of that boundary and, you know, experiment with using other colors. Um, I made a lot of progress as an artist this year. Again, I just did so many things in 2020 that I'm really proud of, and uh, I'm just so proud of myself. <laughs> Um, my bucket list. The two most devastating um, things on my bucket list this year was go to Anime Expo and go to a My Chemical Romance concert, both of which I was actually going to do this year until COVID happened and both of them got cancelled. Play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, my god, I joined three different campaigns this year and all of them <laughs> didn't end up happening. I swear, Dungeons and Dragons is so, it's so easy to form a group and make your characters and make your character sheet and yada yada yada, but it's so hard to actually come together and play the fucking game. <laughs> like, <laughs> Matt Robin, of course, is on this list, uh, and that one I actually did. Oh, yes, so this year I paid for my first commission, and of course, it was over $100 for a Superman fan art, and I don't, I don't regret it at all. Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League was announced this year. That was, that's an absolute pipe dream because it's like a, that's a literal corporation sort of thing. This isn't like a personal goal. Um, I don't have any control over that, but anyways, I can't believe that we're actually getting that early 2021. Um, Henry Cavill is Superman again. He didn't do any reshoots for this period, but... I get to see him on the screen as Superman again. I, yes, I became a gaming YouTuber slash streamer. Um, that was one of my childhood dreams. Literally, I started watching YouTube for video games and oh my God, the fact that I'm 
putting out video games on YouTube is really wild to me. Start a podcast. Yeah. Um, I did that this year and that was really fucking cool. Um, that's a, that's a much more recent, um, thing on my bucket list and I actually did it. So, you know, I've already said so much about how proud I am this year, so I don't want to, like, overdo it, but, like, I really am. I'm genuinely so proud and happy for myself and where I am in life right now. And I wanted to just end this video by saying that thank y'all for supporting me and watching my content, and yes, just thank you so much. Y'all don't understand how much this means to me. That's all I have for this video. If you like my content, please consider commenting and talking to me on there. I really love talking to y'all in the comment section and also consider liking and subscribing to, you know, be notified when the next video will go up. Thank you for watching the video. Oh, you can't see it. I have to do my left hand. Do I naturally do it with my right or my left more? I'm just stupid.